Hey, praise the Lord. This is Brother Clinton. Welcome to my office once again. It's the second day of the week, the 26th of June, the year of our Lord, 2017, 5777. That which I have to speak to you about today is very important, even if you don't speak Spanish, because it has to do with the, the, the missionary work that is going on in, in several parts of the world, and a particular translation of the Holy Bible, which is being purported as being uh, parallel to the King James Bible. So there's a few points that I just need to make real quick before I get into the, to the brunt of the message. And that is that uh, there are those of us who understand and know that the King James Bible is the proper translation of the Word of God in English. Praise the Lord. That's awesome. Uh, but there are many in the churches who read the King James Bible and who are adamant about the King James Bible but don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. And one particular denomination that is very big and that sends a lot of... Um, missionaries into Spanish-speaking countries is the Baptist denomination. Now this video isn't to pick on Baptists or to slam their religion, it's just to speak the truth of the Word of God. All right? And if this offends you, I have no apology that it offends you because the Word that I'm speaking is not my own, it's the Word of God. Having said that, the Word of God says that whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. Okay, this is written in 2 John, verse 9. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. So, unfortunately, the, the reality is that Baptist people don't have God because they're not abiding in the doctrine of Christ. Um, Baptist people believe a lot of false doctrines, and among them being the doctrine of the Trinity, which separates them from the Church of Jesus Christ because God is not a trinity of persons. God is one, and he has come in the flesh. And also, Baptist people, by and large, believe that baptism doesn't save you, that it's just an outward showing of inward change, and that they were saved when they said a prayer accepting Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Well, according to the Bible, there's no such thing as accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and baptism in the name of Jesus Christ is for the remission of sins, and it saves us. That's what the Bible says. So this, these two doctrines just right there separate the Baptist Church from the Church of Jesus Christ. The reason that I've said that is going to be made evident in a couple of minutes. Okay? The Baptist organization is one of the largest organizations in the world that is sending missionaries to many places in the world, especially to Spanish-speaking countries. And when they're sending their, their agents as missionaries to these Spanish-speaking countries, they're giving them a Bible which is called the Reina Valera 1602 Purificada. Okay? Purificada is a Spanish word that means purified. And Reina Valera is the name of a, a series of, of Bibles in Spanish. And it's called that because of two men named Casiodoro de Reina and Cipriano de Valera. And these two men are associated with the translation of the Holy Bible from the original languages into the Spanish language. Okay? Uh, without getting into more detail about that, that's really all that we need to know at this point uh, for the sake of the message. So the Spanish Holy Bible was translated from the original languages into Spanish in 1569 by Cipriano, de, excuse me, by, by Casiodoro de Reina in 1569. In 1602, another version came out called the Reina Valera, okay, which is Casiodoro de Reina y Cipriano de Valera. The, those two men working together. And later on, and, and I'm not sure how many years ago, but just in recent history, there came out this purified, supposedly purified version of the 1602. And it's called the Reina Valera 1602 Purificada. And this is the Bible that the Baptist organization is giving their missionaries to send them forth uh, to Spanish-speaking countries and give to the Spanish-speaking people. Inasmuch as I applaud their efforts in giving Bibles to the people and going out and preaching the Word of God. Unfortunately, number one, they're Baptists, so they're not preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, and they're preaching a gospel that is false and that can save no one, and unfortunately the Bible says that if anyone preaches another gospel than the apostles of Jesus Christ preached, even if it's an angel from heaven, let him be accursed. And so those that are preaching to people that if they accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, that they'll be saved and covered with the blood of Jesus Christ and and that, you know, you just get baptized after you're saved as a public profession of your faith, those people are accursed of God, okay? And also, unfortunately, the Bible that they're giving people is not properly translated, all right? Now, 
Having said that, I'm only five minutes into this video and I've set the, the foundation for what I'm about to explain to you, okay? The, the organization that is giving these Bibles to Baptist missionaries who, who really don't speak Spanish and telling them that it is parallel to the King James Bible are deceiving them. All right. Now, maybe not all of them are deceiving them on purpose, or maybe a lot of them are deceiving them because they themselves are deceived. But somebody up at the top is deceiving them on purpose. And <clears throat> I'm going to explain to you why. This is just going to be a short video. It's not going to be a long discussion about all the errors of, of that particular Bible. But it's this video is going to let you know basically two things. Number one, that the, that the Reign of the Letter 1602 Purificada is not the same as the King James Bible that it is not translated properly, and number two, that it is not translated properly on purpose because it is perverted in exactly the same way as many of the modern English versions that have departed from the truth of the Word of God and, and made these English versions uh, purposely mistranslated in order to deceive people away from the doctrine of Jesus Christ. It is called the doctrine of Balaam in the Scripture, and it is a purposeful military deception in order to, by stealth, infiltrate the Church of Jesus Christ and get the people in the churches to come away from the doctrine of Christ, to come out from under the shadow of the Most High, so that they become weak and vulnerable and lost. That's what the doctrine of Balaam is all about. And that's what the Reign of the Letter 1602 Purificada is all about as well. So I'm going to share with you three passages of the Scripture, just three, from the Reign of the Letter Purificada, and I'm going to show you uh, just very briefly, why they are not the same as the King James Bible and why they are not the same on purpose. Okay, So, I have it on, on my screen in front of me. Let's start with John chapter 1, verse 2. Okay, I'm going to read John chapter 1, verses 1 and 2 from this Bible. It says, En el principio era la palabra, y la palabra era con Dios, y la palabra era Dios. Okay, that's verse 1. And verse 2 says, Él era en el principio con Dios. Okay, so those of us who know the scripture, you know John, you know the gospel according to John, and you know that in the beginning of the gospel according to John, the scripture says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then verse 2 says, The same was in the beginning with God. The same. Well, in the Reina Valera 1602, Purificada, <clears throat> Their Bible says, El era en el principio con Dios. The word El means He. He. And it's the same as a lot of the modern perversions in the English language, which say, He was in the beginning with God. Okay? The sentence, He was in the beginning with God, is not in the Scripture. It was never written by John the Apostle. Because He is a personal pronoun, refers to a person, and there was no one in the beginning with God. There was no one in the beginning with God. God created the heavens and the earth. Not God and someone else created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This is the first verse of the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. There was no one there with him at the time. No one. Right? <clears throat> That's why um, the Trinitarians, who believe in a false doctrine of the Trinity, have purposely mistranslated most of the modern versions of the, of the Bible, which are not holy, and they have put the word he in place of the word the same, or the phrase the same, in John chapter 1, verse 2, in order to deceive people into thinking that the word of God is a person, apart from God the Father, who was with God at the time of creation. Now, I know you're saying, Brother Clinton, the Bible says the Word was with God. Yes, the Bible does say the Word was with God, but the Bible doesn't say the Word is a person apart from God. The Bible says, in the same sentence, the Word was God. Okay? And people imagine that, that when the Bible says the Word was God, it means another God called God the Son. Why do they imagine that? It doesn't say anything like that in the Scripture. They imagine that because of the Catholic and Protestant teachings that they have believed instead of just searching the Scriptures. But I'm not going to get all into that right now. Those of you who, who, who know the truth of the Scripture, you understand what I'm saying. Those of you who don't understand right now what I'm talking about, you're welcome to write to me, and I'll be happy to explain to you from the Scripture exactly why I'm saying what I'm saying. But the very important difference is, in this, in this Reign of Letter 1602, purificada, purified, purified, is that they have purposely mistranslated, the translators of that Bible have purposely mistranslated John chapter 1, verse 2, in order to give the false impression that there was another person in the beginning with God, and there was not. 
And the King James Bible says the same was in the beginning with God. The same is an impersonal pronoun. It refers to a thing. He is a personal pronoun. It refers to a person. These are not the same thing. They're not interchangeable. All right. Now, having said that, I'm going to move on. That's the first one. That's the first one of these three that I want to show you. It's very simple and it's very obvious if you know the Word of God. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 11. Okay, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the first part of the chapter, Paul was talking to the church at Corinth about the order of headship, God over Christ, Christ over man, man over the woman. Okay, and specifically it says God is the, the head of Christ is God, the head of the man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. And then he began to speak about a woman covering her head with a veil. That's about that's what the first half of, of chapter 11 of 1 Corinthians is all about. And in verse 15, <clears throat> In the reign of letter purificada, okay, the reign of letter 1602 purificada, it says, Por el contrario, a la mujer criar el cabello le es una gloria, porque en lugar de velo le es dado el cabello. And what this is saying is, in the last half of the sentence, it says, Porque en lugar de velo le es dado el cabello. What that's saying is, because her hair is given her instead of a veil. It says, her hair is given her instead of a veil. All right, that's not the scripture. That's not the word of God. It's not what the word of God says. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11, 16, let me just go there for you. 1 Corinthians 11, 16, excuse me, 11, 15. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. Her hair is given her for a covering, not her hair is given to her instead of a veil. Her hair is given her for a covering. Right? Her hair is given her for a covering is what Paul wrote, and it's in perfect consistency with all the rest of the scripture. But the phrase, her hair is given her instead of a veil, is not only a purposeful mistranslation, it's in direct contradiction to what Paul was just saying in verses 4 and 5 or 5 and 6. He said, But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. But if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. So it is perfectly obvious by these two verses of Scripture, uh, Paul having said it about three or four times in these two verses, that the covering that he's talking about is not a woman's hair. It is something that covers her hair. And if she doesn't want to cover her head, then let her also be shorn or shaven. But if it be a shame for her to be shorn or shaven, then let her be covered. It's obvious from these two verses of Scripture that the covering he's talking about is not her hair. It is a veil. That's what Paul is talking about. And every single Spanish translation of the Holy Bible, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, men and women, every single Spanish translation of the Holy Bible that I have ever seen except for the Reign of the Letter 1569, the Biblia de Loso, online, every single one except for that one has purposely mistranslated the last half of 1 Corinthians 11, 15 to say her hair is given her instead of a veil. And I have actually had a conversation with a pastor here in Costa Rica one time trying to reprove him from the scripture about the fact that he wasn't instructing the women in his congregation to cover their heads. And he went right to that verse of the scripture and he showed me, well, the Bible says her hair is given her instead of a veil. And I tried to explain to him from the scripture that that's not a proper translation, but, you know, he he has his Bible. And how is how's he going to, supposed to believe me telling him that it's not a proper translation? Now, if he really believed the word of God, he would understand that it's not a proper translation because it's in contradiction to the rest of the Bible. But it's really hard, brothers and sisters, for me to go to someone when, when they can open their Bible and tell me what their Bible says, and for me to go to them and tell them that's not what the Word of God really is supposed to say. You see, that's why false translations are so powerful by the power of the devil to deceive people. And this pastor remains deceived up to this day, as far as I know, because he believes his false translation of the Bible, or that particular verse, instead of believing the rest of the Scripture. But, brothers and sisters, Paul did not write, her hair is given her instead of a veil. He wrote, her hair is given her for a covering. Right? And the fact that her hair is given her for a covering by nature illustrates to us the fact that she ought to have her head covered with a veil when she prays or prophesies. And if she is not, then she's dishonoring her head, which is her husband, 
and also Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ is the bridegroom and we are the bride. And women that are refusing to cover their heads are, while they're praying or prophesying, are dishonoring the Lord Jesus Christ and their own husbands in the house of the Lord and in their own houses. And those who do so are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, you cannot live your life dishonoring the Lord Jesus Christ and then enter into his kingdom. Because the Bible says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and that they may enter in through the gates into the city. So if you're not doing the commandments of God, then you're not going to enter into his kingdom. And if you have a Bible that's telling you that you don't have to obey the commandments of God, you're good to go, then your Bible is lying to you and you're deceived and you're going to wind up in the pit. See, and that's why these false Bibles are the way that they are. So that's 1 Corinthians 11, 15. Let's look at one more verse. It's in Galatians chapter 6, verse 11. Now, let's go there in the English Bible first. In Galatians 6, 11, Paul said, Paul wrote, uh, oops, Galatians chapter 6, yeah, verse 11. Paul wrote, Ye see how large a letter I have written unto you with mine own hand. All right. Now, Paul wrote this because he was in the practice of, or he had, he was, his normal practice was to dictate a letter and then to write the salutation with his own hand, as we can see in all the letters of the New Testament, except for Galatians, all the, the letters written by Paul, that is, um, you know, Romans, Corinthians, uh, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, on and on and on. All those letters were written by someone other than Paul, but they were from Paul, and Paul was dictating, and he was, and the other person was writing them down. Okay, and then Paul wrote the salutation with his own hand. Well, in this particular case, the letter to the Galatian churches was written by Paul's hand, the whole letter. And that's why he said in verse 11, Ye see how large a letter I have written unto you with mine own hand. In other words, Paul is declaring his love and the urgency of this matter and saying to them, You all know that, I'm, that I normally don't write the whole letter, that I normally dictate my letters, but in this particular case, I have written this letter with mine own hand, which is to say, I want you to pay particular attention to the things that I have written to you in this letter because they are very important. And if you understand the, the letter that, to the Galatians, you understand exactly why I'm saying these things. But unfortunately, most of the New Age Bible perversions today will take this verse and they will change the words around so that it means something else. And they say, ye see how with large letters I have written unto you with mine own hand. And the reason they change it from a large letter to large letters is to propagate the lie that Paul supposedly had an infirmity in his eyes that God would not heal him from. And they go to the teaching in, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 where God said to Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee. And they teach from that passage of the scripture that Paul had an infirmity. He was sick. He had, he had a sickness in his eyes and God wouldn't heal him. And that's ridiculous. No such thing is true. <clears throat> Paul never had an infirmity in his eyes that God wouldn't heal him from. All right. Paul was blinded for three days by the glory of the Lord, and then after the third day, the Lord healed him, and he was fine. Scales came off from his eyes, as, as it were, and he was healed. All right. And there's nothing in the scripture that indicates that Paul ever had any infirmity that God would not heal him from. The infirmities that Paul had were the injuries and the scars that he had from the persecutions that he had suffered. As he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, that it was a messenger of Satan sent to buffet him. What does to buffet mean? That means to hit, to strike, to beat up. That's what buffet means. And so Paul's thorn in the flesh was the persecutions that he suffered and the, and the scars and, and damage that was done to his body, the injuries that were inflicted upon his body by the stonings and the beating, be, being beat with rods and, and being shipwrecked and left in the, in, 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 the, in the sea and being left for dead after stoning. Uh, those were Paul's infirmities, but he didn't have a disease in his eyes that God wouldn't heal him from. Having said that, these people, especially the Baptists and a lot of other denominations as well, use their false perverted Bibles and, and where it says in Galatians 6.11 that he wrote to them with large letters. And they, they use that in their theological nonsense, spinning their fairy tales in the churches, to tell people that Paul wrote with really big letters because he couldn't see very well. That's ridiculous. Nothing, no such thing has anything to do with the scripture or with Paul, the apostle of Jesus Christ. And in Galatians chapter 6, 11, in the reign of the letter 1602 Purificada, it says that same thing. It says, Mirad en cuán grandes letras os he escrito de mi mano. 
Look at how with what such large letters I have written to you with my own hand. Okay, Paul did not write with large letters, and 1 Corinthians 6.11 does not make any mention of large letters. It says a large letter. Okay, now, the word letter can be used in the English language, and, and uh, well, not in the Spanish language, uh, in, but in the English language it can be used to describe two different things. It can be used to describe a character of an alphabet or an epistle. Okay, in this particular case, the word letter is referring to, the, to an epistle not a character of an alphabet. But it goes even further in the Spanish language because in the Spanish language the word letra only means a character of an alphabet. It doesn't mean a letter like an epistle. Okay? In, in Spanish, in order to say an epistle, you would say una carta o una epistola. But una letra in Spanish does not mean this kind of a letter, an epistle, a written letter an epistle. It doesn't mean that. It only means a character of an alphabet. And so these people that translated the 1602 Purificada purposely mistranslated this verse of the scripture in order to propagate the lie that Paul had an infirmity in his eyes that God wouldn't heal him from. Okay. Now these, my brothers and sisters, these are just three examples, just three examples of how the Reina Valera 1602 Purificada is purposely mistranslated. The people that, that did the translation on that Bible were Trinitarians, and they were people that don't believe in the doctrine of Jesus Christ as far as women covering their heads when they pray or prophesy, which means that they're dishonoring God in his own house, and the women are dishonoring their husbands in the house of God. <clears throat> and also, these are people that believe that it's not God's will to heal you because they say it wasn't God's will to heal Paul. And they say that you should glorify God in your sickness and your infirmity, which is a doctrine of devils, which is a complete contradiction to the word of God in every point. Because the Bible says, with his stripes, ye are healed. The Bible says, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. The Bible says, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them anoint him with oil, and pray over him in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he hath committed any sins, they shall be forgiven him. So the doctrine of the Trinity, the doctrine of women not covering their heads when they pray or prophesy, and the doctrine that God doesn't want to heal you, or it's not God's will to heal you, these are three antichrist doctrines that are all set forth purposely in the Reign of Valera 1602, just like they're set forth purposely in many of the New Age English versions of the Bible that are purposely mistranslated in order to lead people astray from the doctrine of Christ. And the Bible says, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. So this is to let you all know, whether you speak English and Spanish, or only English, or whether you're a missionary, or whether you're a Baptist, or a Presbyterian, or a Methodist, or whatever denomination you may belong to, this is to let you know that the Reina Valera 1602 Purificada is not parallel to the King James Bible like the people who gave it to you told you it was, and that it is not parallel to the King James Bible on purpose, and that your enemy, the devil, has given you that Bible to give to Spanish-speaking people, knowing that you don't understand Spanish, knowing that you don't understand the things that I just explained to you, or that at least that you didn't understand them until now, so that he can use you to give those false Bibles into the hands of others <clears throat> so that they can read them and think that they know Jesus Christ when they don't and perish in hell. Does that make you a little angry? It should. Direct your anger at the devil and seek God in his word and in prayer and in fasting and come to the knowledge of the truth and come to where God would have you to be and come to the point where God would anoint you to do the work that he has called you to do. Come out of the false doctrines of mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth and serve God in spirit and in truth because only the remnant that knows God, that hears his voice and that obeys his word will enter into the kingdom of God. And those rest uh, on the broad path that leadeth to destruction, they will not make it. They will not make it. So this message is given unto you, those of you who love the Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity, and for those of you who are confused about this, because there's a lot of videos even here on YouTube. Uh, there's a particular man named Robert Breaker, and I'm not slandering him or anything. I've, I've spoken to him. Uh, well, I shouldn't say I've spoken to him because we weren't face-to-face, -face, but I've communicated with him via text. Uh, in YouTube comments and email, 
and you know he's not a Christian. He's not in the doctrine of Christ. He's a very um, dedicated person, dedicated to his particular form of religion, and he has at least one video on YouTube, maybe more, proclaiming that the RV 1602 uh, Purificata is the same as the King James Bible, and, it, and that is the proper translation of the Holy Bible in Spanish. And that's just not true. It's not true. And a lot of the reason that Robert Breaker and other people like him don't understand that is because they're Trinitarians, because they don't believe that women ought to cover their heads when they pray or prophesy, and because they don't believe that God will heal you. See? And, and for that reason, they think that their Bible is, is correctly translated when it's not. Okay? It's not only improperly translated on purpose, but it's not the same as the KJV Bible. It's not the same as the King James Version. I've just showed you from three different examples. I'm going to leave below in the information box the link to the Bible that I was just reading for you online so that you can see that it is the RV 1602. You can check it out for yourself. And I just, like a, like a couple minutes ago, I just want to encourage you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to seek Him with all of your heart. If you seek, you will find. If you knock, the door will be open. If you ask, you shall receive. But if you just sit back, you know, in your easy chair watching the world's entertainment on television all week and then just go to that thing that you call a church on Sunday and listen to the pastor entertain you and you pay him for his entertainment, um, you're going to be terribly, terribly surprised when, you, when your spirit leaves your body and you wind up in hell. And after a little while, you wind up uh, standing before Jesus Christ at the judgment and have, hearing him say, I never knew you. So get to know Jesus Christ. Now is the time. Today is the day of salvation. I don't care what church you belong to. I don't care how many times you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I don't care if you're the, you know, if you sing the loudest and the best of the whole choir. I don't care. It makes absolutely no difference. There's still room for you in hell, and hell has opened her, her mouth to receive you until you come to the Lord Jesus Christ and obey his gospel and abide in his word. That's the message that I have for you in this video. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen.